Jeff Sessions has agreed to recuse himself. The Democrats, they want more answers about the Attorney General's dealings with the Russians. Our one-on-one -on -one conversation with Congressman Nita Lowy about that and a whole lot more. Then we put a human face on the president's immigration crackdown, the heartbreaking stories of what some kids and their families are forced to deal with. Also, legendary theater critic John Simon here in the studio to review Jake Gyllenhaal's appearance in a Sondheim classic, Sunday in the Park with George. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French. Thank you so much for joining us this Friday night. Well, the White House, they're ratcheting up its defense of Jeff Sessions and President Trump. He's also going on offense against Democrats who want the AG to step down. The president tweeted this out about the Senate minority leader, New York's own Chuck Schumer, with the following quote. We should start an immediate investigation to Senator Schumer and his ties to Russia and Putin. A total hypocrite. New York Democrat didn't waste any time, though, firing back on Twitter, saying the fine. Happily, talk regarding my contact with Mr. Putin and his associates took place in 2003 in full view of the press and public under oath. Would you and your team do the same? And the White House is continuing to downplay Sessions' meetings with a Russian ambassador. One of the president's spokesmen saying Sessions was only a volunteer when he met with the ambassador, so the whole story is not even newsworthy, their words. Well, Democrats are not in agreement with that, and that includes one congressman, Congresswoman Nita Lowy. She represents parts of both Westchester and Rockland counties, and she is also the ranking member on the all-important Appropriations Committee. So much developing news uh, out of our nation's capital, specifically as it relates um, to Jeff Sessions. Was recusal enough, um, or does he need to step down? I find this whole episode shocking, and I've called for him to step down immediately. You know, people would say, Congressman, all right, he didn't answer um, as, as clearly or truthful as he should have, but... If he had just said he had met with him, it wouldn't be a big deal. Was he really trying to cover it up? How do you respond to that? I don't know whether it's a big deal or not, but the fact that he didn't acknowledge it, the fact that he met with him as a representative of the campaign, and he will say no as part of my official duties, but we know he was a very central part of the campaign, and he met with him while there was hacking by the Russians of the DNC back in September. The fact that he doesn't think anything's wrong, as the Attorney General, he should step down immediately, and I've made that position clear. Appropriations. This is the part I'd love to know, not even so much from the Democrats, because you guys have already, but, but what you're hearing from fellow Republican members in your committee. And I ask this because, uh, you can help me with the math, but back of the envelope, if you're going to do massive tax cuts, if you're going to increase military spending, if you're going to spend a trillion, and that's with a T, on infrastructure, and I can keep going up and down the list here, the math doesn't add up, and I know the Republicans are the pay-go party here, where you've got to have offsets to make the math. There's one thing, if you're the president, but were Republicans, conservative fiscal hawk Republicans, on the Appropriations Committee with you, will they go along with what the White House wants here? That's a great question. Glad I asked. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, we haven't finished 2017. 2017 subcommittees of appropriations, and I'm the top dem on that, are negotiating in good faith, and April 28th is the deadline. We already passed the military construction bill. The defense bill is coming up next week, which was negotiated in good faith. Then we have 10 other bills. I don't know if the Republicans are going to be able to get them done, but we have been meeting in a bipartisan way. So after April 28th, either we will pass those bills or the government will shut down. Then you have to look Do you think that could really happen? Oh, <laughs> I don't know what can happen today. I find this whole scenario shocking. And in fact, many people would say that the president's speech uh, had more polish. It was well written, but it was the same campaign request, ca same campaign statements. 
Now that's going to refer to 2018. So we don't know what's going to happen to the 2017. But you got to have a sense, and I'm going to ask you to violate any confidence. No, you can tell me. Are Republicans me. going, what are we doing here? No. Or you think they're going to go along? But what's interesting, you have the Freedom Caucus, that's the far right, yep. that says cut, cut, cut. Then you have the middle of the road, about 56 members who say they're a little more moderate, but they vote the party line. Then you have the rest of the Republicans who are so afraid of a primary, if they <laughs> agree to anything, that on appropriations, it's hard to know what they're going to do. Let me get to... Um, Obamacare. Um, we saw the prop of uh, Rand Paul going around, uh, you know, searching for this bill here and moreover willing to print it out for everybody. Democrats like those optics. Do you have any idea, or more better yet, do you believe Republicans have any idea what they're really going to replace it with? Because there's words out today that by the end of the month, they're going to have a bill ready to go. Look, when I talk to some of my Republican friends, acquaintances, <laughs> they've been yelling repeal now for seven, eight years. Now, if they had a decent substitute, don't you think it would be out there? They'd be talking about it. They can't substitute for it. So when they're talking repeal, doesn't make any sense. If they talk repair, I'd love to work with them on repairing it. Deductibles, too high. Yep the cost of insurance too high. There are things we can do to repair it. And the president is saying he's not going to touch Social Security and Medicare. What about Medicaid, New York State? How are we going to pay for all that? And people like Paul Ryan want to block grant Medicaid and Medicare and Social Security, cut the numbers and send it to the state. Oh, I'm sure Governor Cuomo would like that. And what are we going to do? Raise taxes to pay for all this or deny people the care? It'll be a disaster. They don't know what they're going to do, and that's why they haven't done it last year, the year before, mm. for the last eight years. We've seen um, very troubling uh, numbers of um, hate crimes uh, that have popped out, and anti-Semitic uh, ones in particular, um, not just to our region, obviously, but nationwide, cemeteries being desecrated, et cetera. I know you've looked into this, um, and I know the president spoke about it in the very beginning of his speech, but why do you think this has happened in particular in the last few months, the concentration of these incidents, and just how serious and troubling is this? Never did I think it is so disturbing to me to see the incidents of whether it's toppling stones in a Jewish cemetery, whether it's attacks at synagogues, and finding the answers is a challenge. I don't know that I know all the answers, but I know bringing people together, hopefully Jews, non-Jews, mm. Christians, Muslims, the hate Do you think it's coincidental coming. that in the campaign season we went through um, and some of the rhetoric and the dialogue that it's happened in that vacuum? If you ask me personally, the kind of rhetoric was disgusting. The kind of hate language that too many people thought acceptable. Uh, I can't really believe that every Republican can agree on this hateful stuff and the kind of language, but it created an atmosphere in which this kind of activity is acceptable. Mm. So I know the president has spoke out against the latest actions, but we have to do more than speak out against it. This is a major challenge, and we have to mm -hmm. work together to make it clear this kind of thing is just unacceptable. We mentioned off the top of this interview that Jeff Sessions obviously has recused himself from the investigation regarding Russia. Um, and while you said that's not enough, do you believe we need a special prosecutor? And you're there on the Hill, obviously. Is there a sense that we're just at the beginning of this? There's going to be a lot more that's going to come out. We need to know, number one, everything that happened. We don't need it influenced by politics. And Comey certainly 
didn't do his name proud with the way he behaved during the campaign. We need a special prosecutor. We need to know what happened in the elections. And we need to know what's happening between some of the people who may be involved in these activities. We need to know it now. Good enough, Congressman. Thank you so Thank much. You. I appreciate Always it. Always a pleasure. Well, the president's saying one thing, and he's doing another when it comes to jobs and a pipeline. And the vice president doing the same thing when it comes to private emails and servers. We're going to take a look at the White House that seems to be consistently inconsistent.